Association. And he even had a mushroom named in his honor. Okay, let's see if I can pass it. Zenia, Zenia Baldwin, is that right? Okay. Dr. Baldwin would love to detail for you the most minute mycological mystery. As an example, he would enjoy describing the crimson creatures to the gilded gills of his, <laughs> of his most recent find. Laura would be next, seeing both his mother and grandmother were avid gardeners in the great town of Union, New York, where he had grown up. Both of these women adorned their homes with beautiful bouquets of decorative dry flower arrangements. My father would try his very hardest to emulate their love of flowers with his own creative assortment from Oakmont. Our family has a painting of a, of a flower arrangement that once sat upon a bureau in his beloved Grandma Hayden's sitting room. Fauna would be his fourth favorite, being he loves to document and catalog all the animal inhabitants of the woods that surrounded our home for over 57 years. From the flying squirrel to the fur free fish and frog that would be fed faithfully by my father, he has enamored, he was enamored of all the wildlife that would so graciously share their habitat with us. My father loved the pileated woodpeckers, foxes, deers, chipmunks, and even a turkey now and then. It was just those darn pesky squirrels and robins who became the arch enemies when they shredded the moss he nurtured in his yard. <laughs> the forest would be his fifth favorite, would be the fifth favorite of my father, for he had an unquenchable desire and love for the natural wonders of the world, which he had hoped to share with everyone. As a child, I was brought on, brought on camping trips across the entire country from New Jersey to California in one trip from Maine to Florida and several others. As a family, we often stopped to visit family, friends, and, and all the national parks along the way. My birthday present one year was a camping trip to one of my favorite natural wonders, Boulder Field at Lake Harmony. Another Baldwin family favorite was Watkins Glen, which has a reputation for leaving visitors spellbound. At a future date, we, will, we plan to privately spread his ashes Who's gonna? Who's reading the uh, the blessings? I can do it. John, here you you hold this. I'm getting ash. I turned off the microphone, so just remember to turn it back on. of being dyslexic is everything in life to be either way <laughs> or both ways or neither way okay the blessing of the ashes so i happen to have his ashes here in this beautifully decorated box with 
uh, water, his favorite waterfall, Titanic on his front. And here's uh, chanterelle mushrooms and uh, the Russells, which he worked on so hard to make. Here's, here's Richard uh, doing a little putting in the yard and uh, with John nearby helping him. And then on this side, we have uh, Bald Head Cliff, where he loved to go for many years to be next to the ocean and, uh, and enjoy uh, nature in that way. And probably Goldenrod Pass. Beautiful park. Yes. No. It's okay to the artist. <laughs> oh, um, uh, lovely Miss Megan, who's sitting on the couch and waiting. She personally decorated this box as a gift to us, and uh, we are very grateful for all of her uh, talents and uh, good, good yeah. spirits in helping us over this last year, uh, taking care of Richard and other things, uh, keeping the yard up as much as possible, and decorating and putting in wall, uh, new wallpaper, freshening things up after 60 years of Shall we say, Mr. Frugal saying no? <laughs> okay, Blessings of the Ashes by Adi Ama Kap Kappa, which doesn't sound right, I must excuse me. Claimed by death, we remember Richard's life. Blessings for a life well lived. Blessings for a peaceful departure. Blessings for shared friendships. Blessings for humor and wisdom. Blessings for faithful service in this community. Blessings for curiosity and a zest for life. Blessings for love of family. Blessings for the known and the mystery. Blessing on Rich's ashes. Amen. Joyful memory. You have joyful memories, Miss Pat? I have joyful memories. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> these, are, these are from some of the people that yeah, wrote this way. Well, some joyful memories, memories of my yeah. father. And they, they couldn't be here, so I wanted to read them. You can provide your own. Um, this is from Gary Muller, <laughs> friend Mr. from Mr. summer camp at Camp Hilltop. Shabby. Rich was a kind and generous person and will be remembered for his life lessons for Only a few people have had such a positive impact on my life. He was the inspiration for many nights that we He will be next. And we have Russ, Bat, College Bunnett, both chemistry majors at the University of Rochester. We shared many classes and laboratory sessions. We're roommates for two years, meals together in the dining hall, etc. After graduation, Dick was my best man at my wedding at Catalan Con in July of 1960. It is the truth that each must leave and live only in the memories of the living, but the news of Dick's passing was a profound shock. It is a shame that his sudden death ended his valuable study of fungi. <laughs> they Clyde Barley, college friends, we're so sorry to hear of Richard's passing. We have so many great memories of him, and he will be alive to us, and I'll take that. Uh, is it on? I think it's on. Memories. Rich will be missed. Stephen Weininger, grad school friends. We are very sorry to hear about Richard's death. We remember with pleasure the days of grad school together, and Richard's particular fondness for mushrooms which remained an interest long after those years. Assorted recollections include the, his fondness for the music of, oh no, of Pacopia and Purple Cat. He will indeed be missed. Burgood, grad school friends, I'm very sorry to have lost my old son, but I remember the old days such as playing chess with him via postcards, whizzing back and forth between New Jersey and California in the era before the internet and email. He won so many number and word contests that some organizers banned him from future contests. Then there were the mushrooms, many varieties, many species. Rich led a full life, and he loved everyone in his family. He will be missed. And then it's Lenny and Dick Clett, Endicott friends. Dick was one of the most intelligent, best informed, and compassionate people that we have ever known. And more importantly, he was a true humanitarian, who dedicated his energy and talents to making the world a better place. Dick will be sorely missed. Now, my mother, my mother was going to do this part, 
but unfortunately she had to go to the, the hospital this morning. And so I have just an idea that she might have wanted to open it up if anyone else had any comments that they wanted to say. Okay. Okay. <laughs> My father-in-law cared deeply about all people and worked to make the world a better place. He had good friends everywhere, many of whom he kept for decades, as evidenced by that long list of people um, from way, way back. And um, you know, family was very, very important to him. And you know, some of my fondest memories are playing games with him. He was, you know, he enjoyed affectionate competition with me and the family and you know he was so good at all the games that any win against him was always a triumph <laughs> and, then, you know, um, and very rare so i just want to say i loved him and i missed him very deeply and thank you all for coming is there anybody else around uh, anything scientist. Every time he got gas, he meticulously logged the price, gallons and miles driven, for reasons that I'm sure made sense to him, but no one else ever figured out. <laughs> he spent countless hours searching the yard for new mushrooms, Russell is being his favorite, and meticulously analyzing and documenting thousands of samples. This led to much of the house being appropriated for this cause. <laughs> uh, he was convinced that our yard which he named the Oakmoss Mycological Preserve, was the world's most diverse acre of land. <laughs> Who knows, maybe someday one of the mushrooms he discovered in this very special, special yard will change the world. Um, Dad was a champion for the environmental and humanitarian causes, as everyone has been saying, to uh, zero population growth, poverty, hunger, and various other charities. He wanted to make the world a better place, and his motto was, live simply that others may simply live. Dad loved people. He made countless friendships that lasted a lifetime. He would keep in touch via mail and phone calls and our annual holiday letters. He took road trips all over the country and visited his friends that welcomed us into their houses. Similarly, he always welcomed friends and family and even strangers into our house. Like exchange students from Austria and the Isle of Man and uh, Clifford Rustia who lived with us for a while. Uh, Dad loved nature waterfalls, watching wildlife, camping, but mostly his beloved moth and putting green, which he worked on most of his life. He loved foods like blueberries, raspberries, M&Ms, ice cream, and lemon cake. He loved sports like watching golf legends, Arnold Palmer and Tiger Woods, or playing in the par three course at Albums right down the road. Dad hated a few things as well, such as the uh, New York Yankees, John McEnroe for some reason, <laughs> and the smell of Fritos always drove him crazy. <laughs> uh, but most of all, he loved life and wanted everyone to be healthy and happy. And we all miss him dearly. Thank you. Thank you, John. I think that, uh, that ends the ceremony yeah, part, unless anyone has anything else to say. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, We've got uh, food in the uh, hors d'oeuvres in the kitchen and desserts downstairs. Desserts and drinks are downstairs. And uh, we'll enjoy the house. And uh, if you're feeling brave, you can try enjoying the woods as well. <laughs> Thank you, John. Love you.